Hi, I'm Frank Mahovlich, and I guess I can take it for granted that the reason you're listening to this record is because you want to improve your game. While a lot of the tips and secrets I'll be telling you in the next little while are the very things that have enabled me to play up to NHL standards. Really, the constant practicing of these ideas, pointers, and tips are the first step towards successful hockey in any league. And you know, the time to develop these good hockey habits is right now, when you're young. I believe that three things are important if you intend to be an above average hockey player. First is knowledge. The ability to know what to do. You'll never play like a pro if someone doesn't tell you what to do. That's the purpose of this record. The second is practice. A determination on your part to take your knowledge and work at it. Hour after hour, day after day, until you are expert at what you want to accomplish. This is up to you. No one can do it for you. The third is opportunity. As well as knowledge and practice, you need a chance to play hockey. The more you play, the more you can develop and apply the skills you've gained. Now there's one other thing I want to tell you before I give you my hockey tips and secrets. And listen very closely because it's very important. You and I both know that there are thousands of boys across Canada who play hockey. And just like you and me, they love the game. But not all of these fellows are going to wind up in the NHL. How could they? After all, there are only six teams in the league. But hockey can and does teach one of the most important things you'll ever learn. And that is sportsmanship. The sportsmanship you'll acquire during your hockey playing years will go with you for the rest of your life. And here's what it will mean to you. You'll learn to obey instructions. And what's even more important, the value to you of obeying these instructions. When you study, practice, and play hockey, you quickly learn to rely on the other fellow. You need him, he needs you. This gives you a big goal to work for. And I don't just mean hockey goals but the goal of satisfaction that comes from doing a job the very best you can. You know, hockey is a way of life, and I'm sure delighted you've included it in yours. It's the hard work, obedience, and give and take that makes for the sportsmanship I mentioned earlier. And if you carry this sportsmanship down the road of life with you, when you're a man and possibly have little fellows of your own playing hockey, you'll be a very happy and successful person. So work real hard at all parts of your hockey game, and I know you'll be just as happy and content with life as I am. And maybe, just maybe, mind you, I'll be down at Maple Leaf Gardens in a few years cheering you and your teammates during a Stanley Cup game. Now let's get on with the hockey instructions you've About your stick. When looking for a stick, avoid a heavy blade and a whippy shaft. It is easier to handle a stiffer shaft and to control your shots. A stick must also have balance. Basically, your stick should come up to your chin when you are standing on your skates. Of course, some players choose to shorten the length of their stick. Others prefer to leave it long. Both have their advantages. A shorter stick will enable you to stick handle better. The longer stick is ideal for pass receiving and checking the puck from opposing players. You must decide for yourself what's best for you. 
Taping the hockey stick is done to protect the blade from cracking. It is also much easier to control the puck with a taped blade. My stick is taped from the toe to the heel and I find there is less friction and the puck will slide off the blade easily. Don't forget to put a knob on the handle. Wind the tape around the end of the handle a few times. That is all that is necessary to give you a good grip on your stick. Other equipment such as gloves, shoulder pads, elbow pads and pants should be loose fitting to ensure comfort. Knee or shin pads should fit snugly with socks holding them in their proper place so that if you fall they won't be knocked out of position. Let's talk about playing goal. This position is very difficult for you must remember that the equipment weighs up to 30 pounds. Being able to move around quickly with that weight is a burden to anyone. I urge you to do a lot of practice skating with your pads on. This will surely help you move faster when you're in the net. You must also be alert at all times. Many goals are scored from outside the blue line because the goalie was too relaxed and careless. Good reflexes are a quality that cannot be overlooked in a goalie. Here are some secrets I picked up from the NHL goalies that will help you develop good reflexes. For example, in the offseason, there are several sports you can take up in order to sharpen your reflexes. These are tennis, handball, and in particular, baseball. In these, you gain valuable practice catching a ball, which compares to catching or handling the puck in goal during the hockey season. Sometimes I wonder what a goalie thinks about when he is called upon to stop a breakaway or a penalty shot. It certainly is a high point in any game. Here's a tip based on what I have witnessed over the years in the NHL. I think the proper thing for a goalie to do is to stay as far out in his crease as possible. This cuts down the angle for the player who is about to shoot at you. If you see that he is not going to shoot but is trying to stick handle by you then move back into your net. There has been a great deal of controversy over a goalie wearing a face mask to protect him from serious facial injury. As time goes on a goalie loses most fear of the puck ever hitting him. However, no matter how confident you may be, I think it is a good idea to wear a protective mask because accidents cannot help but occur in such an active sport as hockey and it is not fair to either you or your family to take unnecessary risks. As a goalie, your task does not end at being able to stop the puck. It is necessary for you to remember certain traits of the players you are competing against. Many players use a slap shot. In this case, it is wise for you to move out at them in order to cut their angle down. Some players put their heads down before shooting, while others excel at stick handling. If you can remember what the top players in your league are capable of, it will certainly help your goals against average at the end of the year. So study your opponents. You'll be a better goalie for doing it and you'll win the respect of all your One of the first things you must learn if you're playing defense is skating backwards and turning on your skates. A good practice routine is to skate forward from the corner of the rink to the center ice circle and then turn around and skate back to the corner repeating the pattern over and over again. This is one part of the game that is not easy. Figure skaters spend five to ten years practicing every day before some can master turning and spinning properly. 
If you find that you are a more defensively minded player, couple yourself with a player who likes carrying and shooting the puck. But if you tend to be more offensive, you should be matched with a player who doesn't commit to carrying the puck too often. This way, you will have a balanced defense. Keep this tip in mind when you're choosing your defense mate. In practicing defense, coaches will usually have three players coming down the ice against two defensemen. The two defensemen must be careful here not to move too soon or charge at the puck carrier. You should try to play a waiting game and force the play into the corner. When in this position, one man should be in front of the net to intercept this pass or to block a shot while the other player forces the man in the corner to make a play. Passing the puck is essential if you want to be a good defenseman. Here's a good defense exercise. Have your forward skate up the boards with the defense passing them the puck at the blue line. You will learn how far ahead you must pass and at what speed. You should practice this exercise with your forwards until you have perfected your ability to pass. Shooting cannot be ignored either, for many important games have been won on goals scored by defensemen. Since most of your shots are from the blue line, that is how you should practice. It is useless to stand five feet in front of the net and slap shoot right at the goalie. So if defense is your choice, practice shooting from the blue line and watch it pay off this year. Body checking is an art in itself. This contributes to making hockey as colorful as it is. To be skillful in body checking, you must learn not to charge at anyone with your stick up over your head, but practice skating your opposition off into the boards. This is all that is necessary, and it does the job without anyone being seriously injured. But you must practice. In summing up, above all else, remember to practice skate backwards and also turning on your skates. This is most important. If you're a forward, you have to skate farther and cover more ice surface than any other player on the team. The centerman, in particular, should be an effortless skater with the ability to shoot from either forehand or backhand. In addition, he must be able to win face-offs and pass the puck with accuracy. The centerman is usually the first player to check the opposing defense, forcing them to hurry the play and make mistakes. Face-offs are of prime importance. Here's something to consider. The team that wins the most face-offs usually wins the game. When practicing face-offs, remember to place your feet the width of your shoulders so that you will be well balanced. Keep an eye on the referee's hand. In order to have the jump on the opposing player when the puck is dropped, be sure to let your lineman know where you intend to direct the puck. You should have a pre-arranged signal. I believe this is a tip. If you play on a wing, you have to develop an effective shot. There are numerous ways to do this. I usually stay out after practice for five or ten minutes and take shots at the goal from different angles. Having a hard shot is important, but being able to shoot quickly and accurately is even more important. Here's an idea to help you develop accuracy. Lean a wide board vertically against the top part of the net, leaving the corners open to shoot at. Now remember, it is more difficult to hit a target while you are in motion so practice skating from the red line, then shooting as soon as you hit the corner face-off circles. If you practice this hour after hour, I'll guarantee you a lot more goals this year.
As a wingman, you must keep to your own side of the ice and try not to wander. I practice skating up and down the boards, and when I go to turn, I turn toward the boards every time. When it comes to a game, I make the inward turn automatically, so that I do not interfere with my centerman. During the off-season, there are numerous ways you can keep in condition for hockey. Playing baseball or golf is excellent. Riding a bicycle will develop your thigh muscles, which are the principal muscles in use when you are skating. I believe any boy who really cares about hockey should ride his bicycle several miles a day. Tennis is another good conditioner. Here you are stopping and starting swinging the racket with accuracy to hit the ball at a confined target. The same applies in hockey when you shoot the puck at the goal. There is a limited target to shoot at. The Russian hockey players play soccer to keep fit during the summer months. They become very agile and I might add that they are in the finest condition of any athletes I have seen. In order to be a good hockey player, or any kind of an athlete for that matter, you must be in top condition. Players who break training rules and ignore personal conditioning do not excel in their sport. In our letter of invitation to training camp, we are required not to be overweight, with a minimum of being able to do 25 push-ups, 25 sit-ups, and 30 knee bends. These three exercises are good for you too but work up to them gradually if you're not in condition. A full night's rest is particularly important for young people like yourself. When I was going to school, my friends and I would usually play hockey from the time school ended until dinner time. After dinner, it was homework until 9 o'clock and then to bed. Proper rest is I mentioned earlier in our talk. Canada is generally credited with the modern version of the game, and I think it's one of our finest exports. Today our Canadian style of hockey is eagerly copied by the Russians, Swedes, and Czechoslovakians, to a point where they are capable of playing and beating any Canadian team, with the exception of our top professionals in the National Hockey League. It is a game of speed and hard hitting that makes the strong and the fast stand out. It is the only game I know of where a capacity crowd is kept in a constant state of uproar until the end of the game. Someday, I hope it will be the number one game in the world. Maybe in a few years, you too will join the group who play in the NHL. But as I told you earlier, NHL or not, you can set a personal objective the one I called sportsmanship. It will come to you through knowledge and practice of all the things I have mentioned, and it will help you grow up to be the kind of man Canada needs. Being a credit to yourself, your family, and your country is a mighty fine objective. I wish you success.